I've just come across some very depressing news that the Exorcist stage adaptation is to embark on a UK tour. I wasted my time witnessing this bloody terrible adaptation in London's West End when it was released. The late William Peter Blatty wrote The Exorcist. His son Michael Peter Blatty sent me a message after watching this review and referring to the script for this stage adaptation. He said, I know that my dad was never happy with the script in the early going. So for your convenience, I'm going to save you money and your valuable time with this video review. The Exorcist film made an unrepeated impact on cinema and gave horror a power that audiences had never witnessed before. Since that time so long ago now, its position in horror history has remained high on my list of favourites, alongside The Shining, The Evil Dead and Martyrs. BBC Radio released a play of The Exorcist which is embarrassing, possibly due to BBC Dinosaur producers, an uncreative director and theatrical actors who are not right for work that demands believable interpretation. In London's West End a few hours ago I had an open mind and low expectations. I enjoyed the church sounds and voices being pumped through the auditorium speakers of the Phoenix Theatre on Charing Cross Road. This set the atmosphere really well. Just before the play started a huge ear bashing bang erupted, sending the whole place into pitch black which was a wonderful and a downright frightening way to get the audience ready for what's to come. The stage set design is like a cutout of a doll's house, Regan's home. When one room or section was in action, leaving three quarters of the stage in darkness, it made the drama seem further away. Visually it was too small. The best thing about the set was Regan's bedroom because of the colours used and those bedroom wall effects. Every other part of the set is forgettable. Running for just 1 hour and 40 minutes with no interval, the pace is rushed. The actors were given no space to let their characters breathe. The reduced Shakespeare company did all 37 plays in 97 minutes. Well, this production is like that, the lightning fast version of The Exorcist. Some scenes are bookended with loud bangs and bright white flashing lights. But there's nothing happening on stage that pulls you into any horrific experience. There's only a couple of interesting scenes where the demon actually chats with Regan. It's grooming her. This play's producer is mainly known for putting on musicals. He has the clout to get this on stage, but he is definitely not a good match. Perhaps is the West End stage version of what Simon Cowell is to the music industry, churning out what sells tickets and not what's creative or challenging. Before the play started, I had a look through the program, and when I saw this photograph of the director, my immediate thought was a scarf-wearing lovey director who looks like his peak creative time was in the 1980s. Oh dear, this evening's production ain't gonna work. I can just tell how everything in this play is gonna roll from this single photograph. How shallow am I? But you know what? I was so right. Adam Garcia plays Damien Karras. This performer's talent is in musicals and dancing. I expected him to break into a song or start his Tony Monero dancing from the musical Saturday Night Fever he did years ago. Seriously bad casting. You just can't have The Exorcist featuring musical theatre types. Peter Bowles as Father Merrin. Jesus Christ, he's not a serious actor, he mainly does comedy. 
I hear some of the audience laugh and giggle during and after the should be shocking moments. Are they laughing because they're nervous? Because some people giggle when they're scared. Am I watching the comedy version of The Exorcist? And the script is so bad. There's moments of comedy talk from the Burke Dennings character that immediately removed any sense of threat or evil. Now The Exorcist has turned into a pantomime. Burke Dennings is the cheeky pantomime dame winking at the audience, as if to say, I know this is shit and I wish I was sitting with you instead of being on this stage. Oh no, Ian McKellen is the voice of the demon. I was waiting for him to say, you are aware that I'm not really a wizard. He is a lovely old queen that we all adore and respect, but really, his voice is not right for a demon. The possessed actress lip-synced to McKellen's voice. It looked and sounded terrible. Why didn't they mic her up and distort her own voice so she had control? And on top of that, her possessed dirty face makeup made her look like the Chucky doll. The head spin was done with what looked like her wig turning around on its own. Even Jim Henson could have come up with something more real. Some film adaptations are not right to be staged in an old theatre, and this play The Exorcist is one of them. At this point in time it must remain as it is, a film. This production does not engage or terrify on any level. It's rushed, laughable and totally disrespectful to William Peter Blatty's talent. However, I will keep an open mind for the future. If The Exorcist is adapted by young talent, the young creatives would thrash out a way to bring this horror story to a level that'll work for today's audience. Move the production to a smaller immersive environment distancing itself from comedy sketches that many remember, showing us a familiar story yet delivering it in such a powerful, unforgettable way by embracing modern technology, for example, using giant screens to project the disturbing and highlighting the subtle things that the audience may not notice, take inspiration by U2 Zoo TV tour screens. Then maybe, just maybe, it could one day work. There's absolutely no reason this current production has been put together apart from making money from tourists and pissing off passionate exorcist fans that hope to relive that unique feeling they once had when seeing the film. I'm telling you now, it ain't gonna happen with this production. After the curtain came down, I heard an older guy who happened to be wearing an awesome The Exorcist film t-shirt say to his friend, they've just ruined the greatest film ever made. I couldn't say it better myself. Watching work that must feel real, unforgettable and be a jaw-dropping experience is totally diluted because you've got loads of other people sitting around you. There's so much horror talent in the world. How dare this bunch fuck up such an incredible story. Mainstream theatre will hopefully become exciting and challenging one day when these dull, old school, talentless dinosaur producers and directors who put shit like this on the stage become extinct. They've had their time step down and let the new talent of the future have theirs.